All right, here I will say good morning. Let us begin. So we are in Mir Tashem in the towards the end of Osnun Bays. We are picking up on page Kuf Chof Hey in Sid Kasa Sadik. So I remember again yesterday, the Rebbe really taught us something incredibly amazing, which was based on the idea of the Yerushalmi, where the Yerushalmi says, What or who was the Ribono Shal Olam's favorite generation? It was the Dor Hamidbar, the generation of the desert. And although at first glance, that seems a little bit strange, especially given the fact that, again, as we mentioned this week's parasha, Chita Egel, Chita Maraglim, all of the tragic, sinful activity. Nevertheless, what the Rapsadik is saying is, yet that's the same generation that said Nasa Venishma. That if you want to speak about a generation that is demonstrative of the contrast of the different extremes which man could reach, Dor HaMidbar is a wonderful example. And the reason why ultimately, again, Dor HaMidbar is Chaviv Mikol HaDoros is because Dor HaMidbar teach us the power of change. The power of change. And that no matter what an individual has done, no matter how badly I've messed up in life, personalistic redemption is always possible. The Rebbe then quoted the beautiful Pasuk from Shira Shirim, Kishoshana bin HaChochim, like a rose amongst the thorns. The thorns, of course, representing the sins, the, the Averus of life. The rose, nevertheless, the identity of the rose could be preserved even in the midst of all of the thorns. So if we pick up on page Kuf Chof Hey, so the Rebbe says something so beautiful. He says, Va'adarabba, it's in the right-hand column. I'm reading in Be'uri Echasidus, the right-hand column, five lines in. Va'adarabba, az chashivos nafsho tia yisera, achari sheshava adam b'tshuva shleima me'achit. The Bible says, this Rebbe is going to talk about certain concepts with which we are all familiar with, but the way he frames them is so beautiful. So the Rebbe says, everyone knows that the chashibus of the neshama, the importance of the neshama, is, is manifest, especially in the aftermath of sin. In the aftermath of sin. He says, um, a shahari, sh- listen to this, shoshana shi mitsuya ben achochin, hi chashuva yosha me shoshana ben hashoshanin. So apparently he says, Rebbe, this is so beautiful, that there are different types of roses. Some roses grow amongst roses and some roses grow amongst thorns the most beautiful rose is the one that does not grow amongst roses the most beautiful roses are the ones that grow amongst the thorns it's so beautiful the rabbi says kimo shekasev he quotes over here the zohar sheshoshana shimala reach o muvcheres mikol shar havradim ba'olam the most beautiful rose the most fragrant rose Amongst all of the roses in the world, is the one which grows amongst the thorns. Is the one which grows amongst the thorns. So we'll say, hear what the Rebbe is saying over here. This is so incredibly profound. The truest fragrance is not when you're surrounded all by thorns. The truest fragrance in life is when you're, I'm sorry, when you're surrounded all by roses. The truest fragrance emerges when the rose is surrounded by thorns, but still manages to be a rose, which is a truly incredible and beautiful idea. So the Rebbe goes on and he explains, And this statement of the Zohar is very much in line with the statement of the Gemara Misechus Baruchus, that Bali Tshuva are able to occupy a, a spiritual space that is much greater than tzaddikim gimurim. Now, again, now obviously, this notion of a tzaddik gummer being someone who never sins, we saw this in Reb Tzaddik, there's no such thing as someone who never sins. But you understand this point, someone who struggles, so I'll say to, to frame it a little bit differently, someone who is constantly struggling with the thorns, but still manages to preserve his rose, is so much greater than someone who is just always a rose amongst the roses. Which always say tells you something so. I, I know you've, you've heard these concepts before. It's nothing new, but the way Reb Tzadik frames it is so beautiful. Reb Tzadik is saying, "Is do you know what the essence of life? Do you know what a Kaddish Baruch Hu appreciates most in this world? The struggle. The struggle. When when I am willing to engage in the struggle, when I say Hivon Shal Olam, there are so many thorns, and the thorns are always around me. You're talking about now. I don't mean." 
external adversity. That's true also. I will say, I think, you know, there are moments in life, halavai, if you have the bracha, where maybe there are no, there's no external adversity. But there's always internal adversity. There's always the internal thorns, and I'm always struggling with them. And then I see people who are roses who live amongst the roses, and I and I'm always surrounded by the thorns, right? And I'm always I'm always not only always surrounded by the thorns, but often I'm going ahead and often getting pricked by the thorns, right? I'm, I'm getting cut by the thorns. I'm bleeding because of the thorns. And even today I avoid the thorns. Tomorrow I get stuck on the thorns. And yesterday I got stuck on the thorns. And the tzaddik says, just understand two things. Number one, your rose is always there. Your rose is always there. The rose never withers. The rose never dies. This goes back to what Reb Tzaddik said two days ago. I mean, he said a little bit longer than two days ago. But we learned it two days ago. Where the Rebbe says, the reason why change is possible is because hate never impacts the nefesh hapanimis. Sin never impacts the core identity of who you are. That always remains intact. Therefore, change is possible. So the rose is always there. And what HaKadosh Baruch Hu appreciates more than anything in life is not when I am a Shoshana bein HaShoshanim. Because the truth is, it's easy to be a rose amongst the roses. The real challenge in life and the real, the real success story in life is when you could be a Shoshana bein HaChochim. So then you could be a rose amongst the thorns. When you could preserve the beauty of your rose while battling your thorns each and every day, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says is life success. In Cain, so skip a little bit to the left-hand paragraph. So we'll say, so th- th- this, so now, the Rebbe takes this concept, takes this concept, and, and really expands it a little bit. So look what he writes. He says, on the left-hand column, page kuf chof hei. So we'll say, I'm sidestepping a little bit some of his other theme, which is Mashiach. Now, we're, we're going to come back to Mashiach also, but the Rebbe really started this whole conversation is that the Rebbe was exec- exceptionally intrigued by the concept that the Dar, the generation of Mashiach, may not initially be worthy, but then ultimately, again, they are transformed into being worthy. So the Gemara discusses, remember again, we saw this a number of days ago, how does this happen? Sometimes the Chadish Baruch Hu goes ahead and is Ma'amid, a Melech Sheikh Zeros of person, Akash Baruch Hu brings about the despotic ruler, the Xeros motivate us to do tshuva, and the entire generation changes. So that, that was the springboard for this conversation. The Rebbe was intrigued by that change model, that you could have a generation that begins being quote unquote unworthy, but then morphs into something incredibly worthy. So he goes on, he says, This is incredible. So we'll say there's two things happening over here. There's a national conversation and a personal conversation. It's the same conversation. It's the conversation of change. Conversation of change. In the messianic context, so the conversation of change tells me that the generation could be undeserving one moment and then be transformed into deserving in the next moment. That's the national conversation. On the personal level, the same thing is true. That I could be a Shoshana, I could, I could find my rose, even though, again, I am surrounded by the thorns. So the Rebbe says something amazing. He says, don't think, Ayala aladas, don't think that dynamic change, dynamic change has to go ahead and take a lot of time. Don't think that it has to take a long time until Klal Yisrael comes to the level of Tshuva Shlema. Both say, again, on a national level or on a personal level. Why? Ki Tshuva Gimura eino oreches zman klal Wow. Let's say now we're, we're beginning something that, that is transformative. Transformative. The Rebbe says, tshuva doesn't have to be a prolonged process. Real tshuva could happen in a moment. Could happen in a moment. As the Gemara proves to us in Perak Beis and Kiddush. So we'll say, let me show you his example, and then, and then we're going to have to back up a little bit and understand this. What's his example? So the Gemara, we'll say, famous Gemara, right? If a man is Mekadish woman, a man comes and betrothes a woman. Conditional Kiddushin. 
Almanas Shani Tzadik Gomer. A man says to a woman, become Kudash says to me, on the condition that I'm absolutely righteous. What's the halacha says the Gimara? Afilu Rasha Gomer Mikudashas. Even if the guy is Mamish Rasha Gomer. Rasha Gomer, nevertheless, the Kiddushin is good. Why, says the Gimara? Choshishin Shemehir Her Tshuva Badaito. Because maybe the Tshuva. Maybe the Tshuva. Now, listen, they understand why that's a strange Gimara. Because, again, if a guy goes in and says, Become a good on the, on the Kiddush of the Gomer. And now we say, We're Choshish, maybe he did Tshuva Badaito. That means that externally, what does the guy still look like? What does he look like? A Russia. Right? In other words, I don't mean I don't mean externally how he dresses. I, I mean like externally, as far as we know, he's still a Russia. There's nothing to indicate to us that he has abandoned his rishos. The only thing that could possibly be happening is that internally something switched. Right? Shemehir here. Chuva bedaito. Maybe he did chuva in his mind. So externally, nothing looks different. But yet, we'll say, what do you see? That ability to be ma- now again, even the lashon over here. Shame hear her chuva bedaito. Hear her means what? Means what? A thought. A thought. He didn't do anything. He didn't change anything. The only possibility is that maybe he had a thought of chuva, and yet it's clear from the gemara. That's enough. It's clear from the Gemara that that is enough, again, on a halachic level, to allow the, to allow the Kiddushin to take effect. Right? He's a Mekadish woman with it tonight. You can be Mekadish with it tonight. I'm going to marry you on the condition you give me a million dollars. Okay, so if the woman gives me a million dollars, then we're then to in the Kudashas. Marry me on the condition I'm a Tzadik Gomer. If I'm a Tzadik Gomer, good. So, e- even though the guy doesn't look like a Tzadik Gomer, we've known him up until this point as a Russia. Shemehir Tshuva Badaita, which tells you two things. The one tells you the power of thought in Tshuva, which we'll get into, but according to Rabbi also tells us that Tshuva could be instantaneous. Tshuva could be instantaneous. We'll have to stop over here. How that works, how you could have instantaneous Tshuva. When we, or we'll say again, we normally think Tshuva is a process. Tshuva is a mahalach. So the dynamic of that, Emir Tashem, we will see on Monday. Shukar Chabosayim.